Hi, uh, hello everyone. I'm Primal from UBC. I'm going to talk about why smartphone permission models need to be contextual. Asking for permission at the installation of a mobile app isn't that helpful because users lack the context, as in they don't know when and how these permissions are used in practice. But this is what we have in current Android system. Asking for user consent every time when there is a sensitive request, as we found out from our study, is not practical either, because it happens every 15 seconds. And under, under certain context, users might not need a, a prompt. So with current all or nothing permission model, users are likely to make bad decisions in terms of which application to install or not, that are likely to end up violating their own privacy. To tackle this question, we analyzed how benign applications behave in the wild, as in how they are using these permissions. So based on the analysis, I'm going to talk about how we can empower the user to make better contextual decisions. Why do, we pe why do people make bad decisions again? Few people read the permission list when you install the uh, application. And even fewer people understand them correctly. Even if they understood correctly, they, they lack the context, as I mentioned in the previous slide. And apps are overprivileged, which means they are seeing more permissions than they should. And it also distracts them from the actual permission that they should be focusing on. Can we fix this? As a solution, a previous study came up with a list of, a short list of permission requests that needs runtime consent. For an example, if the action is not reversible, like reading your location data. Once the data is read, you can't take it back. Or if the data is sensitive, personal, like reading your browsing history, reading your SMS. Or if that action is going to incur additional costs, sending premium SMS. But when we should actually prompt the user is that when the request is sensitive and unexpected. For an example, so location request is a sensitive permission request. But if you are going to prompt the user on the location request when the user is using Google Maps, it's going to annoy him and habituate the user because it is expected to happen at that context. But if you are going to prompt the user on another application that is trying to access your SMS while the, the user is using Google Maps, that is sensitive and could be unexpected at that particular context. So user might have a different say. So as a first step along this direction, we should, uh, we should study, we should understand how these particular sensitive requests are used in the wild, like how often applications use them. So in that, with that intention, we instrumented Android Jelly Bean 4.11. So how Android works is when, when a third party application requests a sensitive resource, internally Android platform verifies whether that particular application has the permission. So we log all such permission checks triggered by third party applications. So not only those permission checks, we, the framework also log contextual information surrounding that request, like what's the visibility of the requesting application? What is the screen status? What's the actual function application is trying to go invoke? So the best way to understand what's happening in the wild is to actually observe how real users use Android phone. So we asked 36 users to use our instrumented Android phone for a period of one week. So we transferred all of their contacts and update applications so that they could use our instrumented phone as they would have used their own primary phone during the study period. So this helped us to observe more than 6,000 hours of real world usage. Let me give you an idea what we are dealing with here before me dwelling into any specifics. So after the study, we have collected 27 million permission requests triggered by third party applications. Which means every user has received 
more than 100,000 permission requests every day. In other words, during my talk, assuming that I'm not going to overrun my allocated slot, each Android phone is going to serve more than 1,400 permission requests coming from third-party applications, just for my the, the time slot. OK, let's go into details. One thing an average user might expect is to see the application running visibly when they access these resources. But what we found out from our study is that 75% of the time, their expectations are defined. Because three quarters of all permissions that we logged requested by applications either running invisibly as a service or when the screen is off. For the remaining quarter, the user had a contextual queue or a visible queue that the application is running because either the user was directly using the application or there is a visible presence on the screen, like an indicator or uh, music playing in the background indicating that there is, the application is running. To make things worse, application indicators in Android aren't necessarily keeping the user informed too. So the, the purpose of an application indicator is to let the user know when there is an application trying to access a sensitive resource. The sole purpose of the location icon is to let a user know when there is an application reading your data. But what we found out from our study is that location icon only appears for 0.04% of all location requests. Why? The location icon appears only when the application is using GPS interface. So the GPS interface is used only 0.04% of the time. So 99.9% .9 of the time, location is read through network, Wi-Fi data, cache, uh, cellular information. But there are previous studies suggesting that users were actually surprised to see the accuracy of other mechanisms as well, which means that users might want to have a location icon for these requests. So this highlights 99.9% .9 of the time the expectations are defied because they haven't seen a location icon appearing. But how often should a user actually be worried on that? So if you have to track the specific set of permission requests that the previous study came up that needs runtime consent, it happens eight times per minute. So we cannot practically prompt user eight times per minute. But these are permission requests. So for an example, an application can request location permission and read the phone configuration, like read what are the available location providers. That doesn't expose any, any of your sensitive data, right? But another application can request the same permission and read your last known location, which does expose your data. So if you had to track only the specific functions that are going to expose your data, it still happens four times per minute, every 15 seconds. So at this rate, not only it's impractical to prompt the user every single time, it's definitely defy user expectations on frequency on how often are my sensitive data is accessed by third party applications. But on the other hand, some of these sensitive requests might be expected under certain contexts, as in with my Google Map example. So it's important to understand under which context, under which circumstances are these requests unexpected. So now we know how often these requests taking place in while. Now we have to understand the context that make these requests unexpected. So to better understand these circumstances, we carried out an exit survey when users came back to return our phones at the end of the week. So during the study, we probabilistically took a screenshot when an application requests one of these sensitive functions. We didn't take a screenshot on every request because of the space and the performance reasons. But this screenshot helped us to query the question the user on potentially privacy invasive scenarios without priming them during the study. So in this particular scenario, user was actually playing the solitaire, but 
the application Spotify is trying to access nearby SSIDs, which can later be used in for your location. So each user was presented between 10 to 15 different screenshots, depending on their uh, the mobile usage during the study period. So this was the first screen user saw. Uh, so in this case, this particular user is uh, watching YouTube, and then we asked what, what the user was doing and what these things that phone is actually accessing. And in the next screen, we revealed which sensitive resource was accessed by which application. So user is watching YouTube, but the game Solitaire, again, trying to access your S his SSI SSID's scanning for Wi-Fi. And then we asked the important question, how much did you expect this app to access this resource? Because we wanted to check whether this element of expectancy affect to change their behavior. And then we asked, if you were given the option, would you have prevented the app? And the rationality behind their decision. So one of the important questions we try to answer in the analysis is that, would the users change their behavior if they were better informed on the permission usage, on the permission request? And how would this change behavior affect permissions? And what are the other factors that affect the users to change their behavior? So 80% of the users wanted to block at least one permission request. And 35% of all presented permission requests were deemed inappropriate, and they wanted to block, the, block those permissions. So this is the portion that we should be focusing on, because these are the unexpected portion. So when they, may, when they wanted to deny a permission, the visibility of the application that requesting this permission had a significant impact, which means they wanted to vary their decision depending on whether they have a visibility queue, they have a visible queue that the application is running. This suggests that their decisions are contextual. That's why we want to make the permission models contextual. And they did not want to get surprised with this sensitive request. That's why they tended to block more unexpected requests. This also supports the theory that define expectations why is the privacy? When, when, you, when you are trying to understand people, it's just, it's not just, not just numbers. You have to understand their rationality behind their decisions. Because it, A, it tries to, it helps to understand the issues with the current system and, and also to come up with a better system in the future models. So when, when we ask, why do you want to lock the permission? The relevance of a particular permission request to the functionality of the application was the leading reason why they want to block the permission. One user was saying, it wasn't doing anything that needed my current location. So user couldn't understand why this application requested my location. This highlights that when the user made the decision to approve the permission to install the application, user didn't expect this application to request location at this given context. Privacy was the other reason why they want to block the permissions. User was saying, I'm not comfortable with you seeing my text messages. So user doesn't want this application to read his data, his SMS data. So which, which, what does this mean is, when the user approved the application at the installation, either user didn't pay attention or user didn't understand the permission correctly, because if they figured that this application is trying to access their SMS, they wouldn't have installed the application at the first place. So we, can, we started off with permission request, and then we filtered to the functions that only going to expose the data, and then we further filtered down to the context that users might see these requests unexpected, but the rate is still high. We cannot practically prompt the user every single time one of these happens, even in, under the context that they might deem unexpected. So in a way to tackle this question, industry is moving forward with the policy ask on first use, which means that when an application requests one of these sensitive requ uh, permissions for the first time, the platform is going to prompt the user. 
So for an example, if the Facebook, uh, when the Facebook is request location for the first time, platform is going to prompt the user saying, we want to deny all of this. If the user denies it, and then the platform is going to deny all subsequent location requests from Facebook. So luckily, we could evaluate how effective is this policy in capturing subsequent context. It is important because user only get to report his choice in the first instance, and that the system is going to decide for the user in the following context. So what we did was we filtered the cases where a user was asked twice for the same application permission pair. So user has seen two different screenshots, but the same application requesting the same permission. And then we checked whether the user responded the same answer. So out of all such occurrences, half of the time they gave the same answer, and half of the time they gave a different answer, which means if the system was to decide for the user, half of the time, system would have taken a, a decision different from what user would have done if they had the option. Then we included the visibility into the equation. So now we filter the cases where a user has seen two different screenshots where the same application requesting the same permission under the same visibility level. And then we check whether the user gave the same answer. Now the agreement significantly increased to 84% or 83.5%, which means the visibility actually helps to capture the subsequent context more effectively than just using application and permission pair. Of course, this, is not, might, this might not be the perfect scenario because when we include the visibility in the equation, now user get more prompts because the platform has to prompt the user every single time the application makes a new permission request under different visibility levels. So based on our log data, what we found out is that if we were use the application permission pair policy, then a user would have seen 16 prompts for the period of one week. But if you, if you had used the application permission visibility triple, then user would have seen 29 prompts. But this is a kind of a worst case scenario because when, when user gets a new phone, user probably won't install all of, the, all of their 30, 50 applications in, within the first week. But this is what happened in our study because we had to transfer all of the applications to our instrumented phones. So in a more practical setup, it is safer to assume that user, would, user will take more time to install applications and which result in lesser number of prompts per week. We used the data, the exit survey data in a regression model to predict when, when the users are likely to deny permissions. So the other part of the exit survey data that I didn't talk at the interest of time is the screen of data, which means the permission requested when the screen was off. If you want to learn more about that study, please refer our paper. But the, in, the interesting observation that we made in these uh, regression models is that the user variable came out as a strong variable having high variance, which means that all those different factors that I, I mentioned, the visibility, the expectations, affect different people differently because they have different privacy preferences. So if the platforms are to use one size fit all generic rules governing privacy, preference, privacy for many users, it's not going to be effective because it has to be tailored to each user. So what have we learned today? We now know people make contextual decisions. And the visibility of the application that requests the permission is a strong factor, is a strong contextual clue to the user that helps vary their decision. So if the permission models are to be contextual, this is a strong factor that they should take, take into account. And we also know the frequency at which these requests, these sensitive requests happen, make it prompting the user impractical. So another one alternative would be to let the system to decide for the user, but that's also counterintuitive 
Because what we wanted to do is actually let the user to decide, empower the user to make big decision, not letting the system to decide for the user. And we evaluated the policy ask on first use, and we demonstrated that rather than just using application permission, if you in include the visibility, it increases its effectiveness in capturing subsequent context. This will help the platform to learn about privacy preferences under different contexts for each user. And it also helps the user to make better contextual decisions with the inclusion of visibility. So in going forward, it's important that we learn the individual privacy preferences of each users and to help them to make better contextual decisions rather than having all or nothing permission models that we have in the current platforms. Thank you. Any questions? All right, while people get uh, ready to ask questions, I'll ask one. Uh, so one of the things that stood out for me was that, you know, the, the sort of post facto audits seem to work fine, that, you know, what you basically did was later on ask the user, hey, was this okay? And on uh, smartphones, we have markets. So why not just go with that model that, like, we survey once in a while users saying, hey, the operating system or whatever vendors, and say, was this okay? And after a while, if a particular app is egregiously violating uh, expectations again and again, it's just kicked out of the market. So, uh, so if I understood correctly, you're asking is auditing, like letting yeah. the user know, okay, this is what happened, how that helps. So it's, it's a really good question because like, when the actions is not reversible, that previous studies have shown that user actually wanted to make the decision on the spot when the, when the request is actually made not necessarily going back and see, oh, okay, this application has read my data, uh, read my location. Now it's done. The damage is already done. So users actually wanted to have an option right and when, when the request is made. So that's why we want to have, I mean, that's why it would have been nice to have runtime prompts, which is happening we can't do with the frequency which is happening. Um, you gave evidence that users have different uh, preferences, one size does not fit all. Um, analogous research done about uh, location data privacy with mobile devices uh, had similar findings, and, but then showed that uh, if you cluster preferences, you can identify a small number of user types that are fairly consistent and can guide each other. Have you tried that? So uh, that's actually the current project that we are trying to work on. Uh, 